everyone. Today we have legendary graphic designer and illustrator Seymour Quast. You should know him. He's been doing design and illustration for like 60 years. Has a book published. This is not him, but he does this kind of work. Check it out right now. All right, here we are with Seymour Quast, yeah. legendary illustrator mm -hmm. here in beautiful New York City, where you've been working for, I don't know, how long? 60 years. 60 years? Mm -hmm. in, in working in the industry, in, yeah. in design? Wow. That's... Drawing and designing and picking my nose. <laughs> <laughs> no, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we kind of want to sit down yeah. and chat, chat with you about a couple of these okay. things. We can go back as far as like 1979 when you're asked to design a McDonald's Happy Meal box. Is that correct? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. do, what do you remember about that project? Uh, that it came and it went. Really? But it made a lot of people happy. Yeah, yeah. as a Happy Meal Especially should. kids at lunchtime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. So right now, actually, we're looking at uh, what well, looks like somebody took your artwork and uh, turned it into, a, I don't know, a fashion yes, piece. A, a French designer, Olympia Latin. Picked a few of my uh, pieces to put on her clothes. It's great. That's amazing. So, sh so she came to you and said, "Hey, these are the." She had already picked those out. She picked up. Okay. Had seen my work. Uh huh. Uh huh. Maybe on my archive that's online, and her designers went to went to town putting it on her clothes. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's great. It's fun. I love it. Yeah, yeah. just seeing your seeing your artwork sort of in, in a different medium. Well, with the, my my work on fashions, I don't have to do anything. Yeah, that's kind of nice. I like that. It's always nice when you don't have to do much. That is nice. <laughs> so can we talk about one of the one of the pieces that you might be pretty well known for? Yeah, I did that during the Vietnam War, and we were. I what I have there is a bombing Hanoi in, it, in Uncle Sam's mouth. That was a terrible war. Oh yeah, yeah. So how has your like how has your process changed? Has it changed much in sixty years from drawing back then to drawing today? Uh, it's getting a little looser these days. But it, you're basically working with uh, markers and pens, essentially like real lo-fi. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, acrylics and on canvas. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I do a lot of drawings when in outline, filled in with the color, you know, done on the computer. How, how, how was your feeling about like Photoshop no, and Illustrator I, I, when it came out? Uh, it's a great tool and it's great. I mean, the, the idea of being able to color on on the computer is incredible because I used used to have an assistant do the coloring with film and laying one sheet of film on top of another, and it was, it was so labor intensive. Now it's so easy. And I can make changes any time, you know. When you get up and need to be creative that day or you just need to execute on a project, you probably need to, like, what's that process like? What is your place like? Do you go in? Do you play music? Uh, what gets you in the zone to create? Maybe it's just coffee. Maybe just mainlining coffee. Maybe that's, <laughs> I don't know. Coffee's got to be somewhere. Right? I think so. Absolutely. Um, it has to be a little stronger than music. It has to be talk, radio, or television. Oh, okay. I need that kind of distraction to take away the tension of what I'm doing. Because mm -hmm. I... Mm -hmm. After I start on a job making little drawings, after about five minutes, I figure I'll never be able to draw anything ever again. Uh -huh. that, that happens all the time. Um, so I might go from thumbnail drawings to something bigger, and then I start looking around, whether in a, in a book or mm -hmm. a newspaper or something, to take my mind off of it and maybe find something to inspire me. Uh -huh. And uh, hopefully it happens. Yeah. Eventually um, it does. And so, like, do you, is it, do you have any indication of how many times you've been published or any of those sort of numbers in terms of your work? I've done about 40 there? children's books. I don't know, maybe 30 books for adults. Yeah. Uh, Infused them with Steve Heller. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, the one that just came out now, At War with War, uh, I'm, I'm very happy about that because I was able to do... It's a book about... A, a timeline of 5,000 years of conflict mm. wars that we've had. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did about 35 drawings for the book. Your experience with the uh, Kickstarter and like kind of self-publishing was pretty smooth for the most part or? Uh, yeah, well, it was a little scary to see whether it would, yeah. would work. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of exciting that we live in this day and age where we can do this, because right? We 
Uh, couldn't yeah. Do, couldn't do this 20 years ago easily, no. right? Well, it wasn't necessary because there was just there was only the conventional publishing. publishing was, so now there are so many other yeah. outlets. Yeah, I mean, there's That's not great. they're not gatekeepers like there once mm -hmm. were. You right. could say. And the illustrations for these, I don't know if you want to talk about those. It looks like they're created in different ways. Some of them look like oh, sure. pen and ink. Some look like marker. Maybe like woodcut you. even. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And a good job of, I mean, it looks really great just integrating the type with the, uh, with the illustrations, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. The text is in, in red except for the war that I'm illustrating, and that's in black. Okay, okay so that's right the indicator here. of what war it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. But it's all black and white. Even though you're using the different styles, it all kind of works. Yeah. yeah, that one's pretty awesome. I, I don't want to say beautiful, but it is beautiful. Yeah, I'm going to show this to the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Was this just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste? No. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, no. I, I do retouch the, the print. I, uh -huh. don't, I don't cut it apart, but I... Right. I was going to say something about my favorite... Oh, yeah. Or at least favorite piece in here is, oh, yeah. is, be is, is the last one because we know that the war is going to continue. 2016 and there is no ending to right. this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I and think that's sad. it is very sad. And I think one of the things that I find interesting about war and political unrest is it does dig deep into artists and designers for a need to speak. As a kid in World War II, uh, I used to draw planes attacking each other, right, fighting mm -hmm. battle scenes. And I started doing paintings like that, and I still do that now. I mean, that's, that's what I've been doing for a mm -hmm. long time. It ends up being tanks and, and planes fighting each other. Uh, and I guess it gets something that's satisfying me in some way, you know. That these planes are crashing into each other because they, they shouldn't be fighting in the first place, right. you know. Um, so it's a way for me to, you know, I'm totally powerless about doing any anything about war, um, but I can express myself anyway and take care of some of my feelings about it. So is it somewhat of a cathartic exercise? Yeah. Yeah. Well, some great art in the, in the past has been done, you know. Right. Goya did some terrible, wonderful, awful... Yeah etchings about the, the disasters of war mm -hmm. mm. and Daumier in, in France right. did great stuff. Mm. Right. So there is precedent for that. There is. Yeah. And that, that inspired me. Seymour Quast, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it, especially being it's great. It's been an honor. Yeah. Yes. Thank Join you. Join us next time on Make It.